Good morning, everyone. This is Denise Adams from Crystal Waters International Ministries. Wow. How's everybody today? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning from Canada. Good morning from Crystal Waters. So glad to be with you today. Hallelujah. Wow. I've got my mug. It's 2020. And today we're going to be talking about um, your God-given vision, your God-given um, focus, and your obtaining those things that belong to you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to be talking about hitting the bullseye today. Amen. Hearing the voice of God, but hitting the bullseye in the spirit so that we know that we're making changes in the earth. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good day to you all, whether it's day or night, however you're catching this broadcast. I'm so glad you're with me today. Hallelujah. It's an interesting day yesterday. Praise God. If you all notice, my TV's off. That caused problems, I guess, in the background, even though you couldn't hear the words, even though you couldn't hear the melody. Somebody didn't like that. But that's okay. We got the Holy Ghost here today, and I'm excited about what God is doing. Hallelujah. We've been talking about different ways that God speaks to us. Yes, good morning, everyone. God bless you. I hope you got your coffee. I got my 2020 mug. 2020, a year, a new year, a new century, and a new vision. God has a new vision for you this year. He has something for you this year and you know what I want to tell you uh, um, many people have received dreams many people have seen visions and they have received those things from God but you have to fight with your faith to obtain that which God has said and you have to fight with your faith and you have to hit the bullseye sometimes and I'm, and this is just for this is before I get into the teaching. Sometimes, when you are in uh, in the battle of it, the enemy wants to take you out. The enemy wants to get you distracted, send you somewhere else, doing something else. But God has a plan for your life, and the key here is being smart in the spirit. And when you pray in tongues, focus on the vision and the goal. That that vision, good morning, God bless you. That focus on that vision as you're praying in tongues will hit the bullseye. Years ago, I remember, oh gosh, it was probably 18, 19 years ago. Apostle Charles and Devon said something to me specifically. He says, Denise, when you pray, hit the target hit the bullseye, hit the target, hit it. And what that means is focus on one thing. When you pray, guys, when you decree, when you declare, focus on what you want. Amen. And hit it, hit it, hit it in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Because some things you root out, some things you tear down, some things you, um, you know, you push over. And some things you have to, then you have to decree, declare, build, and plant, and put that word in. There's a process to building in the kingdom of God. And God wants to, yeah, bullseye faith, hit that target. Hit it really hard. Hallelujah. Hit it hard. Glory to God. Amen. It's really important that we do that. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. They, because they come into prayer, come in with a list. Come in with a list of the things that you're believing God for and scripture that lines up to it. When you're doing that, you're hitting it with a, with a fist of faith. Amen? You're hitting it with a hammer of faith. Amen? You know, he says, my word is a hammer. My word is a fire. Glory to God. And when you hit the your target with the word of God, God has said this in my life. This is with a prophetic word that came out about me. Have it written out. Have it before you. Have your, your prophecies before you. Hammer it out. Amen. Hit the target. Amen. You can't be willy-nilly about it. If you do that, you're going to be all over the place and nothing gets accomplished. Yeah, a list. A list of um, the things that God's spoken to you about. 
uh, Maureen, if you go back into the early teachings of, of this series on 20 days, you'll see that I asked people to give me a list of three things that they need, uh, uh, that they have been talking to God and God's been talking to them about three things. And on that list, have scriptures that are based according to the word. Amen. And allow God to, you and God, you're going to, you can enforce the kingdom. See, a lot of people get very passive. Well, God said it's going to come to pass. Well, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to have life and life to the overflow. And yes, you may understand your covenant with him, but he will, expects you to enforce the word of God with your mouth. Your mouth is a weapon, guys. Look at this. Weapon. Weapon from heaven. This thing right here. It is a weapon from heaven. That mouth, you speaking God's word in your mouth, smacks the enemy in the face, smacks him down, casts him out, takes him far. What happens is people go, well, God said it's going to come to pass. And they get passive. They get passive. And in that passiveness, what happens? The enemy takes them out. He, you know, it, because they're scattered. And they can be scattered in prayer. They can get too busy. But if you make time every morning, every morning, guys, get up, get out there, pray the word, decree, speak in tongues. We're we're in a this is real warfare. There really is a battle going on here, and in Canada especially, there's a battle going on. I know there's in your country too. There for souls to be one. Hallelujah, amen. Uh, for souls to be one, for um, people to be saved, uh, to see the kingdom uh, protocols and procedures come to pass, the things that God wants set up in the earth. And what happens when that happens? I hear Sadie going, yeah, she agrees with me. Um, my, my cat, she's talking this morning. We need to use our mouth. It is a weapon. And it is a weapon of our warfare. We need to use it all the time so that God things come to pass. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. God things come to pass. Yeah, your mouth is a weapon. So you've got to use it and hit your targets. And and yes, I'm praying for you. Yes, I'm, I'm putting your request before the Lord. Absolutely. And I will continue to do that. Amen. I'm going to do that once a week for you guys. You guys have been with me for the 20 days or even part of the 20 days. And you've, get, you've emailed me the scriptures. You've gone to my website. You've sent in a form to me. And um, that that uh, that is in my here it is. I'll show you my binder. Here's my binder. With all of your requests in here, I'm holding them together and waving them before the Lord. You know, there's such thing as a wave offering. You wave things before the Lord. I'm, I'm waving your requests before the Lord, coming into agreement with your, with, with what God wants for your life, what you have heard from the Lord. And I've read them. I've gone over them, and I've said, come into agreement. So now I stand in agreement with you with these words, and I'm believing them to come to pass. But that doesn't mean you don't stop speaking. Use your weapon, guys. It's the big weapon that God gave you. Are a speaking spear. Use the mouth. It is a weapon. You, we need to. I like this. Do this. Yeah, you know. And uh, that's a weapon of our warfare. Is our mouth. Yes, we have a mouth and wisdom. We have a mouth and wisdom that all of our adversaries can either gainsay or resist. Hallelujah. Amen. Big revival in my country. Praise God for revival. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we've been talking about hearing God's voice. I'm going to switch gears here and go back into the teaching. I'm teaching from my manual, Let the Word Drop. And if you ever want this, let me know. Inbox me. Um, you can send a C to higherword at gmail.com. I'll put that in the, um, um, the, um, the header section so that you know the email address. You can send a, a $20 C to a higherword at gmail.com, and I will send you an e-copy of this manual which is at the word drop it doesn't have my stories it has the scriptures it has the outline of what i was talking about use it preach from it teach from it amen i'm not i i, I like it when people 
um, use these things. Add, add your, you know, there's, I, I've designed it so that, um, well, in the book here, when I have it, I have them printed here in Canada. And I, I don't normally ship them out because um, it's just, it's more time consuming and expensive to get them printed and it'll double the cost on them. So if you can sow, the, uh, sow a seed of $20 or more, you know, that would be great. And I'll put that in the header, but you can have this if you want it and use it. My God, use it. It's not my word, it's his word. You know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's called let the word drop. Let the word drop. I know you can't see it. It's it's in um, it goes backwards on these things. So I, I totally get that. Let the word drop, and I will have the information. I'll put it in the header after the bro after the broadcast, and you can use this because it's a it's a really good. I really like it. It's awesome. I've been teaching from it a lot this past twenty days. Uh, Holy Spirit said to go into it and share it. I have a number of manuals and stuff. I've talked about that earlier. So go to my go to my wall, go to my page. You'll see it all there. There's tons of stuff available for you to use. And, you know, you can preach from all of my stuff. Yes. My goodness, I don't own this scripture. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. But I do appreciate you sowing seed because it took me time and years and years of study to put it together. And uh, it, it keeps me on the air. Can I say that? It keeps me... On the air it makes sure I have a roof over my head this is how I you know I walk by faith and I appreciate that that being said let's get back into the word we're talking about aha moments but we're also we talked about hitting the bullseye but we need to know how God talked to us and last last um, yesterday last day we were talking about different things how God spoke to us we talked about the scriptures, we talked about how he talks to our soul, he talks to our spirit. Sometimes our spirit gets it, but our mind doesn't get it. And so we go by the spirit. If your spirit's got the yes, take that, take that. Your your soul will catch up. You you have to study. <laughs> you have to show your you have to study, but your your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect will actually catch up. It's just amazing how that works. It will catch up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I talked about dreams and visions, and that's that's a whole nother topic. That's just huge, right? These, these are huge topics that um, I'll teach on at different times. I love to teach on the Word. I'd like you to have um, revelation knowledge of the Word because, you know, it says in, in Jeremiah, uh, the people perish because they were you know, teaching priests. You know, teaching people and we need to be teaching amen we need to be explaining how the word goes and um giving insight praise god hallelujah amen praise god so dreams and visions amen yes praise god um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna focus on the teaching so if i don't uh, respond to your comments at this time i, I will do that later um, but I'm going to focus on the teaching so that the people here uh, will get a solid teaching based on the foundation of the word. Yes, there's the cat. There she is. <sighs> what a cutie pie. I like it. I sit down in my chair here and she jumps up and she sits on my paperwork. It's like, okay, let's get going. Let's do this. I'm ready to work with your mom. Anyways, I know I called mom. I said that. Don't tell anyone I said that. All right. Okay, so the next one. Are you ready? Number five. Hallelujah. Amen. Here we go. A chain of command. God speaks to us through the chain of command. Jesus operated that way. He says, I don't do anything unless I hear, uh, uh, unless a father tells me. I only do what my father says to do. Jesus followed the chain of command. We know in chapter um, Matthew chapter 8, the centurion says, you know, I, I know, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a Roman soldier. I'm under authority. If I tell these guys to go here, they go here. If they go there, they go there. They follow the chain of command. And so the uh, centurion says, just speak a word, Jesus, and it'll be so. I know how it works. I understand the chain of command. When you understand the chain of command, things work well. So what in, in for us in the natural... 
Um, and I'm going to go to a scripture to refer to. Let me go there first. It's in uh, John chapter 15, verse 26. And then I'm reading from the Living Bible. It says, but I will send you the comforter, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The source of all truth. He will come to you from the Father and will tell you all about me. You see a, a command, a connection, and an interrelation of that? Let me read it to you again. But I will send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the source of all truth. He will come to you from the Father and will tell you all about me. So the Holy Spirit's going to be talking to you. The Holy Spirit's going to be talking. As he talked to Jesus, he's going to be talking to you about things. And that's the chain of command. He will also use people in the natural. Amen. I have people I submit to. I have leaders I submit to. Different apostles here in Canada and England and around the world. I have apostles who I, I trust their wisdom and their counsel um, in different areas. Some are more of an expert in one area or another area. And I, I, I value their input. I value what they're saying. And if they have a word for me from God... Glory to God, I will listen to what they have to say. Amen. Because it's, it's, it's you know, men and women of God, most men and women of God, uh, I know there's some rogues out there, let me say. I just know that. But most men and women of God recognize that the word that they give out, they are held accountable by God and will will come under judgment on those words that they said. They'll be held accountable for those words that they spoke. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so um, it's very important that we know that uh, leaders are held accountable. So if you're a leader and you've never heard that before, you will be held accountable. And if you want the scripture, dig it up yourself. And if you get, and that's always the best way to dig it up yourself. But if you can't find it, inbox me and I'll, I'll get it for you. But hey. If you're a leader, you know when you dig for something and you get your own gold, glory to God, God will bless you richly. Praise God. All right. Chain of command actually works. And there is safety and security. No matter who your leader is, they are committed. Uh, they are under assignment by God to take, to be a blessing to you with their words and their actions. And, you know, there's an honor there. They're, they're worthy of double honor, actually, uh, for that. And, um, amen. It's important. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. God can speak to you audibly. Yes, he can. Now, John 12, verse 28 to 30. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Yes, the New King James Version. Now, before we go into that, leaders aren't perfect. They make mistakes. So we have to have grace for one another. Grace to allow people to grow because people grow and then they repent for their, they've missed it or whatever. So we allow for grace and love and compassion and mercy and all those wonderful things. We don't sit there hammer our leaders, but we do have an expectation. Amen. Amen. Same with the congregation. They, um, there's an expectation for the congregation to take the time to learn, to, to come and hear the Word of God, to, to get trained, to, to be informed, and to take the Word for themselves and do the work, what they're called to do. If, you're, if you've been uh, born again for one year, there's a, a certain expectation of what you know and understand. God knows it, so does your leaders. But if you've been in, year, in ministry 20 years and you're still um, uh, not praying, you're still not doing what you're supposed to do, it's like a 20-year-old. A one-year-old can't tie the shoes. A 20-year-old should know how to tie the shoes and do some things. And so there's some, some things that you're expected because we're co-laborers and joint heirs. We're working together with Christ to do the work. So he's counting on you to actually do work and to pray and to pray in tongues and to intercede and to know the word of God and to understand kingdom principles. When Jesus came back for 40 days after his resurrection, right? 
okay? He came back to earth for 40 days and he was teaching about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And the word um, uh, pertaining um, and teaching, it was talking about um, strategies and way things go in the kingdom of God. You know, it's good to love Jesus and worship Jesus and understand Jesus, but he also wants to teach you how to obtain things in the kingdom. And it's by saying and decreeing, and I talked about that earlier, I think in the first week, that we need to use our mouth. Amen. That whatsoever we desire when we pray, believe that we shall receive it and we shall have it. Amen. That is scriptural. That's in Mark eleven twenty three or 24, or maybe 22. It's around in that section there. And there's more to it. But that's really important. Amen. To hit the bullseye, guys, we really need to know these things. And to obtain things in the kingdom, we have to use our weapon. Our mouth is a big weapon and our feet we have to have actions corresponding but I'm talking about hmm I guess that's big on God's heart I keep kind of circling back to that don't I okay but we're talking about hearing the audible voice of God have I heard the audible voice of God yes yes I have um, a number of times maybe they're rare they're very rare, but it's possible because you're born again. You belong to Jesus Christ. And even as Jesus and the people around him heard the Father's voice, um, you can hear his voice. I, amen. Hallelujah. In John 12, 28 to 30, um, it's Jesus here. And um, he says, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had, it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. So clearly, they, different people were hearing different things. Jesus answered and says, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. But for your sake. Hallelujah. So this voice didn't come for... Um, uh, Jesus' sake. It came for the people's sake. Because Jesus had been communing with the Father all along. He had been communing with the Father. I'm going to open to, to John 12. I think I want to go into it a little bit more. So open your Bibles, hallelujah, to John chapter 12. Let's take a look at this a little bit more. Amen? I've got to dig out the Word. Okay. Verse 28. Okay, Jesus was talking. and Hallelujah. In verse 23, it says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it shall abide alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And he was talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. And, um, hmm. it's so important to understand that God wants us to hear his voice. And we will hear it at times and seasons. Some people say, well, that wasn't his voice. Well, that wasn't his voice. It was his voice. Samuel, the prophet, heard the voice of God as a child. Next scripture, I want to give you a couple of references in the Bible, and then I'm going to tell you my story. Is that okay? Amen. In First Samuel three uh, one through three and five ver to eleven in the NASB version, I'm going to read it. Don't like to read a whole lot of scripture, but sometimes you have to see it in context to understand. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord. Samuel was Hannah's. Um, love offering to God. He, uh, She says, you give me a son, Lord, I will give him to you and to serve you all the days of his life. God opened her womb. She had not only Samuel, but she had, I believe, seven other children. Hallelujah. Amen. After that child, and uh, Samuel uh, was a prophet of God. We're not, um, we're, um, Samuel was a Prophet, we're not one word dropped. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Any questions I will answer afterwards. So you, yes, you can put your questions up there. But glory to God, you can study along with us right now in the Word. Amen. So Samuel was this little, he was young. He was really young at this time. It says, Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. It was rare. Visions were infrequent. Hallelujah. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. Okay. I'm repeating myself. It happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place. Now his eyesight had begun, had begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And the lamp of the God of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Hallelujah. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for you called me. But he said, I, d I didn't call you. Go lie down again. So he went and lay down again. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. Mm. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called for me. Isn't that interesting? It sounded like Eli's voice. Hmm. But he answered, I didn't call you, my son. Lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, nor had the word of God of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And then Eli discerned. It took three times for Eli to discern that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli instructed him and he said, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Hallelujah. Your servant is listening. Glory to God. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel, which both the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. So what happened in this? Oh, my goodness. There's so much glory in this place. Whew. Hallelujah. So what happened was, hmm, God was speaking to him, and he had not understood. There is the audible voice of the Lord that comes forth. God will use whosoever. God will give you the audible voice. It doesn't happen as often. It's very rare. Uh, even in the Bible, it's rare, but it does happen. One time I, I was in Kelowna and my daughter was about 11 years old and um, she was taking dance lessons and I would sit in the car outside of the dance studio while she took her dance lessons and I saw this guy and he was uh, trying to look in through the windows at these young girls and uh, he saw me and he took off and I and I, I, I that was good um, and uh, I was praying and I bound that spirit of voyeurism in, in the name of Jesus and I just, you know, was praying in tongues against it and my daughter, she came out and was in the car and I was praying in tongues, I says, and I explained to her what was going on and I was just praying in tongues and she was like bewildered, she didn't understand, she's a little girl and uh, so I'm just praying and explaining this to her and, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear my name, Denise. And as I hear my name, Denise, it was like it came over the radio, but it was in the middle of somebody's conversation. It just came out. And I didn't say anything to my daughter for a minute. And I kept on driving across the road. And uh, we were going over the bridge. And I said to her, um, did you hear that? She goes, yes, yes I did. And uh, I said, what did you hear? Your name? I said, okay. So then I kept on um, praying in tongues. And I, you know, in tongues, I prayed to the Lord and said, if that was you, Lord, show me in the scripture. Because I didn't know where that was in the scripture. I didn't know about Samuel hearing the voice as a young prophet. And uh, he did. He gave me that specific scripture about that, the story about that. He he, he gave me, you know, this first Samuel chapter 2, 3, and 4, so that I get the picture of what was going on. And I went home and I looked at that. I said, well, yeah, amen. If you're, amen. I'm listening. I'm hearing. 
Hallelujah. And God will do that for you and he'll do that, you know, for whosoever. But it's his deal. It's not our deal. It's not that we, yes, we desire to hear his voice. Yes, in the word we hear his voice. Yes, we draw close to him. Yes, we want uh, revelations and wisdom and insight. And many people have seen Jesus and talked to him and um, had a face to face. And yes, I have. And I'm not saying that to to say, oh, look at me. No, I'm, I'm saying that to say, look at him look at to Jesus and you have to know that people I, 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 you know people have had more and more visions than I have ever had I've, more stuff absolutely you know I, I'm, I'm just so glad that he he talked to me in certain times you know he, he came and uh, one time um, one time I didn't see him like face to face um, that happened I think once um, but it did happen oh no okay anyways I've been taken to heavenly places to have a visitation a meeting with the Lord and that happens hallelujah it happens it's real guys this I hope you get this it's real spiritual stuff it really does happen so hallelujah um, I just wanna I don't you know Seek the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Lean not on to your own understanding. God will show up in your life. Amen, big time. And when he does, it's just not for you. It's for the world. It's for the world's benefit. It's for people's benefit. So when we share the word of God, when we decree God's word, and when we speak God's word, what happens is we're allowing God to show up in our lives big time. And uh, he will do what he said he would do. And he will use that to not only teach and instruct you, but he will use it to teach and instruct other people so that you would be a blessing to other people, that they would understand the concepts. Because some people go, I don't, you know, this thing happened. I have no one to talk to about. I don't know if that is, you know, scriptural. Did it really happen? And this will give great insight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to look to Jesus. Absolutely. We look unto him, our face was lightened, and we were not ashamed as a word of God. Amen. So I'm teaching you these things, and I'm not sharing all the stories, but I'm letting you know that God does show up big time, and he will turn you upside down in his glory, change your life, and um, you'll never be the same. <laughs> One encounter with Jesus changes everything. I can I can count on my hands the the times and I get, it's getting more and more that God speaks to you. You have these special times that God is there for you. And what happens is, man, you're never the same. It, you can't go back to uh, a tradition or religion. He is so real to you that it's. It's too late. People, some people say there's, they don't do miracles in them anymore. And I'm going, it's too late. Seen too many miracles. And God, you know, God's used me for miracles. He's used other people for miracles. He uses people and miracles happen. Hallelujah. We're in forces of the kingdom. We're in forces of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let me say our, our confessions before I go today. Amen. The boundary lines have fallen for me, for you, in pleasant places. We have a delightful inheritance. We will praise the Lord who counsels us. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. This is our year of fresh vision for fresh focus and obtaining fresh new things. Hallelujah. This is my year. This is our year of the breakout of the glory of God that will exceed all expectations that we have ever known. Hallelujah. This is our year of steely-eyed focus so we can hit those targets. We can hit the bullseye, Lord God. Hallelujah. We can hit that bullseye. Amen. Glory to God. This is our year when God, our God-given plans shall surely, surely come to pass. Hallelujah. This is our year that all other options not of God shall fall away, shall just fall away. The God agenda is the only agenda 
God, our God agenda, Jesus' agenda for our life is the only agenda. Hallelujah. This is your year of leaping forward in the Kairos time of God, 10 to 20 years. Hallelujah. 10 to 20 years shall come to pass in a heartbeat, in a moment, in an action. Hallelujah. This is my year of action. This is our year of action, guys. This is our year when all mountains and the valleys shall be removed and uh, we truly walk in the high places of God, in yes, in heavenly places, far above all power, dominion, and might in this time and in the time to come and in the earth that shall manifest in our lives. Glory to God. This is our year when our words from our mouth will become the sureties of our life. Glory to God. Amen and amen. This is our year when all things are possible to them that believe. This is our year. Everything is coming to pass according to God's word for our life. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is doing exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. That's resurrection power. You know, we talked about flipping the switch of the loves. That There's power in you. Oh, it's right there you look unto jesus you look unto him your face will be lightened the power of god will be present the dunamis ability of god will be released through your mouth through your hands through your actions hallelujah your prophetic acts have power in the earth listen for them god's going to tell you to do something unusual amen and listen to hear what god is saying for you hallelujah well, tomorrow we're going to talk about odd things. Odd things, how God speaks to us through odd things. There's some odd things out there, guys. Yeah, we're going to be talking about them. So listen, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Amen. God bless you all. Have a marvelous day. I love you. God loves you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So we'll talk soon. Bye for now.